October 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 42 and 43 from the Old Testament. Then all the army officers, including Johanan, son of Korea, and Jezaniah, son of Hoshea, and all the people of every class went to the prophet Jeremiah. They said to him, Please grant our request and pray to the Lord your God for all those of us who are still left alive here. For as you yourself can see, there are only a few of us left out of the many that were here before. Pray that the Lord your God will tell us where we should go and what we should do. The prophet Jeremiah answered them, Agreed. I will indeed pray to the Lord your God as you have asked. I will tell you everything the Lord replies in response to you. I will not keep anything back from you. They answered Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not do just as the Lord sends you to tell us to do. We will obey what the Lord our God, to whom we are sending you, tells us to do. It does not matter whether we like what he tells us or not. We will obey what he tells us to do so that things will go well for us. Ten days later, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. So Jeremiah summoned Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers who were with him and all the people of every class. Then Jeremiah said to them, You sent me to the Lord God of Israel to make your request known to him. Here is what he says to you. If you will just stay in this land, I will build you up. I will not tear you down. I will firmly plant you. I will not uproot you. For I am filled with sorrow because of the disaster that I have brought on you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon whom you now fear. Do not be afraid of him because I will be with you to save you and to rescue you from his power. I, the Lord, affirm it. I will have compassion on you so that he in turn will have mercy on you and allow you to return to your land. You must not disobey the Lord your God by saying, We will not stay in this land. You must not say, No, we will not stay. Instead, we will go and live in the land of Egypt, where we will not face war or hear the enemy's trumpet calls or starve for lack of food. If you people who remain in Judah do that, then listen to what the Lord says. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, If you are so determined to go to Egypt that you go and settle there, the wars you fear will catch up with you there in the land of Egypt. The starvation you are worried about will follow you there to Egypt. You will die there. All the people who are determined to go and settle in Egypt will die from war, starvation, or disease. No one will survive or escape the disaster I will bring on them. For the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, If you go to Egypt, I will pour out my wrath on you, just as I poured out my anger and wrath on the citizens of Jerusalem. You will become an object of horror and ridicule, an example of those who have been cursed and that people use in pronouncing a curse. You will never see this place again. The Lord has told you people who remain in Judah, do not go to Egypt. Be very sure of this, I warn you here and now. You are making a fatal mistake, for you sent me to the Lord your God and asked me, pray to the Lord our God for us. Tell us what the Lord our God says and we will do it. This day I have told you what he said, but you do not want to obey the Lord by doing what he sent me to tell you. So now be very sure of this. You will die from war, starvation, or disease in the place where you want to go and live. Jeremiah finished telling all the people all these things the Lord their God had sent him to tell them. Then Azariah, son of Hoshea, Johanan, son of Korea, and other arrogant men said to Jeremiah, You are telling a lie. The Lord our God did not send you to tell us, you must not go to Egypt and settle there. But Barak, son of Neriah, is stirring you up against us. He wants to hand us over to the Babylonians so that they will kill us or carry us off into exile in Babylon. So Johanan, son of Korea, all the army officers, and all the rest of the people 
did not obey the Lord's command to stay in the land. Instead, Johanan, son of Korea, and all the army officers led off all the Judean remnant who had come back to live in the land of Judah from all the nations where they had been scattered. They also led off all the men, women, children, and royal princesses that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the royal guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, and grandson of Shaphan. This included the prophet Jeremiah and Barak, son of Neriah. They went on to Egypt because they refused to obey the Lord and come to Toponese. At Toponese, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah, Take some large stones and bury them in the mortar of the clay pavement at the entrance of Pharaoh's residence here in Toponese. Do it while the people of Judah present there are watching. Then tell them, The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, I will bring my servant, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. I will set his throne over these stones which I have buried. He will pitch his royal tent over them. He will come and attack Egypt. Those who are destined to die of disease will die of disease. Those who are destined to be carried off into exile will be carried off into exile. Those who are destined to die in war will die in war. He will set fire to the temples of the gods of Egypt. He will burn their gods or carry them off as captives. He will pick Egypt clean like a shepherd picks the lice from his clothing. He will leave there unharmed. He will demolish the sacred pillars and the temple of the sun in Egypt and will burn down the temples of the gods of Egypt. God, in this story about uh, the people coming to Jeremiah and say, please, please talk to God for us. Uh, we want to know what his will is for our life so that we can be obedient. And then as we know, they don't listen to anything you say. But the th thing I find most fascinating with the story isn't that, because we all do that <laughs> over and over and over again. But what I find interesting is Jeremiah and the people had to wait 10 days to hear from you. Um, and that kind of caught me off guard as I was studying this passage. It's not like I haven't read it before. But I thought 10 days, that's so odd because obviously you're God and you knew the answer already. And you knew that Jeremiah was kind of in a, a serious predicament with people not believing him and throwing him into cisterns and, and causing all sorts of problems. His his uh, countrymen had just been taken off to Babylon. There was this big two year long siege on the city. Um, There's a lot of stuff going on. And yet you made him and the people waiting to hear the answer 10 days. Now, I, I don't say that as to calling in a question why you waited 10 days. I just am saying you as God could have given the answer immediately. But even <laughs> in those situations, you're still showing your power, you're still sh showing your sovereignty of if I ask you to wait 10 days, I can ask you to wait 10 days and you better wait 10 days. And then after 10 days, you better do what I say. Otherwise, there's going to be consequences. And sometimes if you've been waiting for an answer from, from you for 10 days, it, it might seem like a really long time. Um, I've been waiting for an answer for something for a long time, well, <laughs> a lot longer than 10 days, and and your answer is wait. We get three answers from you, no, yes, or wait. Um, and in this case, the answer was wait. You need to wait until I give that answer. I could give it right now, but I need you to wait because I'm in charge here. I, ha I am the God who has power. None of your other gods have power. I'm the one who has power. And I think about that in our own lives, that sometimes we get the answer almost instantaneously, or sometimes even before we know to ask the question. And then other times you do ask us to wait. And it's, I know it's not up to me to question the why in the waiting part. Um, it is very frustrating. And that's, you know, not a fair thing to say, but it's just an honest thing to say. And I know you already know this because we have <laughs> we have conversations about it all the time. Um, 
during that time, I know that you're teaching me things. I know that I am learning a little bit of patience, hopefully. Um, I'm also understanding more and more how sovereign you are in my life. Everything you do with us, for us, to us, because of us is all very intentional. Whereas in our lives, a lot of things aren't intentional. They're just haphazard, without thought type of things. Everything you do with us is very intentional. So if you've asked us to wait 10 minutes, uh, 10 days, 10 years or longer for certain answers, then you actually are asking for our obedience to you. It's not so much you're asking us to wait. You're asking us to be obedient. Just like you asked them to be obedient after they got the answer. And they got the answer, they didn't like it, and then they were disobedient after that. So sometimes even if we wait for the answer in obedience, <laughs> what we do with the answer uh, can definitely turn into disobedience really quick. God, you have every right, every right in the world to ask for our obedience. You created us. You gave us life. You gave us this amazing world to live in. Uh, and the family and friends that you surrounded us with. You have every right in the world to ask us to be obedient. <sighs> but we're not. We are sinful creatures who choose our selfish ways over your will for us. God, I ask for, in your time, wisdom for understanding and learning what I need to during any waiting time. Whether it be short term or long term depending upon the question or what you what you want me to learn in the process. And if the answer is no, allow me to be understanding to the point of obedience and move on. If the answer is yes, allow me in obedience to do what you've asked me to do. If the answer is wait, then <laughs> you're going to have to provide the patience for that because I do that very poorly, as you know. <laughs> I'm working on it. God, we know that for 10 days you weren't ignoring your people. We know that you don't ignore your people for 10 years if you've asked them to wait. You're asking for our obedience and you're waiting for our response. God, allow our hearts, our minds, and most importantly, our actions and our words be obedient to what you're asking us to do. Whether it's no, yes, or wait. Allow an acceptance into our life so that we can be obedient to whatever your will is for us. Because whatever your will is, is what is best for us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.